Richard, I've been talking to scientists, philosophers, theologians about, about science and about what science can tell us about the nature of reality, ultimate reality. And I have lots of different opinions regarding the capacity of science in principle to reach to, to ultimate truth. Some would limit it to its own spheres, and some would say those spheres are all that there is. How do you see it? Well, I think science is very good about making predictions and understanding the physical world. It makes predictions, you can test these against experiments. We've learned quite a lot about the universe. It's amazing that we have learned so much that, as we have. We've learned how old the universe is, where we are in the universe, and so forth. Um, Science is trying to understand the laws of physics, chemistry, et cetera, et cetera, uh, biological systems, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and we've had a very good success with that. Uh, we're trying to understand the ultimate theory of everything. We're not there yet, but we're trying to understand how the laws of physics work. Um, but more than that, physics has gotten more ambitious. We'd like to also understand the initial conditions of the universe. And maybe you can understand the initial conditions of the universe as well, just not how it operates, but also how it got started. That seems a proper task for uh, physicists understanding the beginning as well. And so, it seems so remarkable that we can go from the subatomic structure to the vast size of the universe, this enormous sweep in our in our capacity to understand, and, and, and we've only been at it a, really a few hundred years of effective science. Yes, that's, that's true. Um, I think that uh, people then uh, were trying to understand the, the beginning of the universe. I think a theologian might come forward and say, well, um, have you really answered the question of why is there a universe <laughs> uh, as opposed to no universe at all? It's easy to imagine no universe at all. So that's, a, I think, a question that, that science is not really answering or prepared to answer at the present time. Um, we, but it is proper, I think, within the realm of science to ask the question of how our universe did get started. But it's legitimate for people to ask the questions, what is the nature of reality? Scientists now speak of a multiverse where you can see different universes. Um, some of these are beyond our observational capability, but we talk seriously about them. Um, other people may legitimately ask. Uh, it's an assumption of people to assume, well, the physical universe is all that you can ask about. That's an assumption. Okay, so. Um, I think one of the things that we've learned in mathematics that's been very sobering is that Gerdel showed that you can't prove every theorem that you'd want in mathematics. You have, to, with a finite set of ax axioms, you have to keep adding more <laughs> axioms. So I think uh, that philosophers and religious leaders and so forth are also going after the truth by different <laughs> axioms and different s schemes and so forth. And, um, Religion's older than science. We've been thinking about religious questions uh, for a long time, and I think we'll continue to think about them for a long time in the future. <laughs> okay, so we have these different ways of knowing things, but many scientists would say that, yeah, there are different ways of knowing things, but one is uh, an archaic way of thinking, and one is a legitimate way of understanding what's really true, and, and frankly, is the only way we can make progress. We can make progress in science, but we cannot make progress in any other of these so-called ways of knowing. Well, I think that, again, I think uh, science has been around a shorter time. So again, if we're, um, uh, the Copernican principle would tell us, that our observation point is not likely to be special. We're not likely to be at the very end of science or the very beginning of science. We'd be very unlucky. I'm a scientist. I'd be very unlucky if we're nearly out of great <laughs> ideas. And I'm, I'm one of the last scientists that will be before science goes out of business. Um, the, the, on the other hand, um, we're not likely to be at the very beginning of science where there's a vast amounts of discovery much more important than the discoveries we made. You're likely to be somewhere in the middle. So we've got 
important things to discover in the future, like the theory of everything that may be well as important as what Newton discovered and so forth. Um, but we're, we're somewhere in the middle. Um, the same thing's true, I think, of religion. Religion's been very old, of different forms. People have been asking you know, spiritual questions for a long time. And so I think we'd be unlucky if we were at the very end of that epoch and science was about to replace this and so forth and, and so forth. So I think that um, um, the, the humble position for the scientist, <laughs> as a scientist I feel, like the sort of humble position to take is to, uh, people, people always tend to think that their field is special <laughs> and more important than all the other fields and will replace all the other fields. So, so uh, for me personally, although I'm very excited about what science is, is doing, um, I, I think that uh, uh, it's one of the key things that we found to help to find truth in the world, but there's other methods for searching the truth as well. But let's look at what science has achieved in the last century in terms of an understanding of the subatomic world, to cosmology, to the structure of space-time. It, it seems like this has been such an explosion of knowledge that we've, we're approaching limits in both directions. So doesn't this make this last century, in the current time, a special time? And, invalidate the Copernican Principle? Well, the Copernican Principle tells you that you're not likely to live at a special time, but it does say that you're likely to live at a time where the population is high because more people will live in a high population century than in a small population century. So on the timeline of human civilization, if you're a random person, you're likely to live in one of the high population centuries. And indeed, we find that the 20th century and the 21st century are the two highest population centuries that we've seen. Very few people living in prehistoric times. Um, and we should worry that the population <laughs> may go back down because if there is a peak, you're likely to live in the peak. Now, there's a saying, may you live in interesting times. Well. The reason we've had all these great discoveries is because there are lots of people around to make them. So you're living in a very high population century, uh, and so you're living in a century where lots of interesting discoveries are being made. So if the population goes back down in the future, the number of discoveries made per century may go down because there are fewer people to discover these things. So but are we looking at fundamental limits in terms of the microscopic nature of, of the atom and subatomic structure and, and, and the large scale structure of the universe and what caused the universe? We're dealing with the most fundamental questions. We can't d deal more fundamentally than that. Well, I think if you, if you had a book that told you if you had a book made in the far future, of everything the human race was ever going to learn about science. And, and it started at the beginning, it ran all the way through. I think we're currently somewhere in the middle 95% of that book, somewhere in the middle. We're not at the very beginning, we're not at the very end. If we, if we were at the very beginning, there'd be like, we'd expect there'd be 40 people in the future more important than Newton. It's not likely to happen, I think. Um, on the other hand, if, if, we're in the, if there's only 1 40th of science left to be discovered, that means that uh, we'll have no discoveries in, in the future that are more important than the 39th most important <laughs> scientist. And I think we can beat that if you, if you think about it. So um, we could have another big epic discovery as important as Newton, the theory of everything. Whoever discovers that will go up there and join Newton <laughs> and Einstein if we get that, if one person does it. So, um, I think we're somewhere in the broad middle, and we have perhaps as many exciting things to discover in the future as we have in the past. How did the universe get started? Is there extraterrestrial life? Uh, you know, you can think of things that could make the list, but 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 not a large number one. I think Newton's always going to be near the top of the ultimate list.